This video covers PowerSDR KE9NS version 2.8.0.85 and all the updates since 0.75. <clears throat> so uh, the first thing I added since then was uh, a quick split function. Normally you um, you hit the split button uh, it just activates the split whatever your VFOs are on but I've, I've added a feature where if you right click Basically, if you're in sideband, it'll go uh, plus 5. If you right-click again, it goes minus 5, so you can toggle between. Now, you see the blue, the multi-RX, the, the sub-receiver's on, so you're actually receiving uh, both the, the, the VFO A and B simultaneously. If you go into Setup, <clears throat> and uh, you can... You can uh, click on the split TX listen and that's an optional feature so you can make it so that uh, that it doesn't do that it, it you know turns off the ability to listen I mean you can always override it and turn it on here but basically you if I turn it off and now I right click now I'm not receiving but I can always just click on the multi RX button to turn it on and off so I can listen to the um, the people trying to contact the DX station in CW mode this uh, right click reduces to uh, 1k so it hops back and forth 1k so that's the quick split function and the listen function uh, <clears throat> I've made the pan uh, the pan adapter and waterfall fully uh, automatic it, it, before you would have to left click and right click to adjust and then you would go into setup and then these these sliders you could adjust the 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 base brightness um, and you could adjust the level from the slider here now with the auto waterfall checkbox enabled what that does is when I change bands and the audio level well in this case the audio level didn't change but um, you go to a, a band where the audio level or I change antennas let's say then it automatically readjusts it for you So that's the uh, the auto feature, and you could still left click, click, right click on there to manually adjust it. Because um, sometimes uh, during a storm, it might adjust the levels on you when you don't really intend to. Uh, the next is uh, DTMF tones. <clears throat> I've added some DTMF uh, tones. Go to uh, the keyboard, and down here, if you're transmitting and you uh, uh, if you're transmitting and then you hit that um, button, then it'll actually uh, transmit the, the, the tone. And also there's a keyboard shortcut as well right there. The next thing is I've added um, more band text. Try to fix some more of the band text. If you right-click on there, added some more band text. And then again, to to update your band text... When a change is made, you got to go to General Options, and then you click on this this button here, and then it'll update your band text file. And then when you move, then it'll it'll make the update to the band text. So um, the next <clears throat> is I uh, I built a solid state amplifier and use the uh, flex wire port on the back, which is an I squared C bus. Uh, to communicate and change bands and I, I got a video if you go to the flex my website the flex page and, and the left side there's a little uh, shortcut to my solid state amp and then there's a video and they're showing it but uh, this is how you activate it right here uh, activates the the flex wire commands and uh, the next is the LOTW okay so we open up the spotter Spotter's off right now. What you do is you take your call sign, put your call sign in there, <clears throat> and right click on this field and it opens up a spot to put a password in. So just uh, delete it, put in your password that would get you into LOTW if you were to log in. Uh, and it tells you right on, on the screen there to the uh, LOTW.awrl.org. You know the the LOTW login. That would be the login we're looking for. Then just right click again to get rid of it. <clears throat> and then uh, 
now what you do is just click on the LLTW file and it explains this explains a little bit of it but uh, um, so I, I click on the file and then it turns yellow it's attempting to log into the LOTW servers and then every five seconds you'll get a last risk on the screen and it's downloading from them from their servers their servers are kind of slow it's just downloading a text file but it, uh, depending upon how many QSOs you have this could take a couple minutes it could take it could take three minutes <clears throat> I don't have that many uh, QS QSOs logged into LOTW I'm not a contester I, I am just more of a rag tour so it found uh, 1300 QSOs um, 554 are uh, con you know are confirmed QSLs so I'm done it turns green if it turned red there was a problem uh, and it would have give you the fault code up on the screen but it turned green we're ready to go so now we just activate the spotter window and when the spots come through they'll be color coded uh, basically what I'm doing right now is just checking for DXCC which is the DX Century Club uh, it, every country has um, an entity number and it just checks your uh, it checks your LOTW versus the DX location text file that comes with power my version of power STR and the spotter or in the in the spot that appears up on the screen so uh, it checks to see in this case okay uh, this <clears throat> this call sign <clears throat> TF3 PPN <clears throat> through the DX location file that I include translates to Iceland um, and it looked in your LOTW log and it says that you need this uh, it's a dark purple so that means you need ice I need Iceland period I need a my no matter what band I don't have them on any band so that's why now versus this green it says the uh, the light green means I've actually Talk to this station, got them confirmed, but on a different band, uh, not on uh, 30 meters. I've got them on some other band. I don't know what band, but he's on another band. So uh, I could try to contact him on this band on 30 meters, but uh, I do have him on another band. The orange would mean, and because I don't check states at the moment, it's just looking at DX. Uh, CC entities so basically the United States obviously I have a contact in the United States on uh, six meters so I don't need him for DXCC that's all that means uh, it, if I would have contacted that station uh, KN6NG then it would it would have been either pink or green depending upon if it was confirmed or not uh, if you see a pink that means I contacted that person but it wasn't confirmed in this case with the green it means I've contacted that, contacted that station and it was confirmed so here's another one Kosovo on 20 so as they come in they just get color coded as long as this is green if this is off then they don't get color coded and uh, so then that just fills up and then again you can uh, if you were to right click that opens up a QRZ page for that station uh, so again, just right click and then that'll open up that station. I can uh, just click on it, left click, <clears throat> um, and then it'll take me to that spot, highlights it blue, takes me to that spot. And if they start coming in too fast, just hit the pause button so that it doesn't they don't go come in and really fast. Now the other thing I also did is because of FT8 being uh, FT8, a lot of times they don't use um, they don't use the actual frequency they were transmitting on they use the FT8 frequency the base frequency <clears throat> and uh, because they use the software to change the frequency rather than the radio so uh, I allow multiple spots on FT8 frequencies which I don't on other frequencies only FT8 frequencies I allow multiple spots on the same frequency so then that puts it up on on the display there uh, but uh, it retains all the other functionality if you have the rotor hooked up like I do and you were to uh, uh, click over this not only would it take you to the frequency but now it starts to change my antenna starts to rotate to 172 degrees so um, it retains all the other functionality but uh, that 
that's it for that. And then the last is up here where you normally can click left click on this and you can go between gray and uh, color. I use gray when I do remote operation. It does cut some of the it cuts the bandwidth down over over the internet for remote operation. But also I, I right click on this and then that turns off the fill. So this reduces the bandwidth quite a bit uh, um, over uh, when I'm doing a remote desktop operation. And so it's just a right click and a left click. And that's it.